Welcome to Vishesh Educational Videos. In this video, I am explaining about input modes, right? Different types of input modes. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. To get a notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon. Now, first of all, to understand what are input modes, you need to understand some of the basic things. The first thing is, Input devices can provide input to an application program in terms of two entities. So you know that input devices is going to uh, uh, accept input from the user. In what way they are going to provide a input? For example, to understand this, we, we need to understand what is a measure and what is a trigger. Measure of a device is what the device returns to the application program. If I say a keyboard, keyboard is going to return characters to the program. So that character is a measure of a keyboard. Coordinate is a measure of a mouse. X coordinate, Y coordinate, two dimensional coordinates. See, right? So measure is nothing but uh, what device is going to return to the application program. Trigger of a device is a physical input on the device with which the user can signal, uh, can send signal to the computer. Getting my point? When a trigger occurs, signal is going to send to the computer. Whenever the trigger occurs, for example, when you enter the character using a keyboard, the trigger is going to occur. That is, when you press a key in the keyboard, trigger is going to happen. That is going to uh, tell the computer by sending the signal. It can tell the computer that is event is happened that something is occurred so right getting my point for example see the measure of a keyboard is a single character or array of characters you know that already so character whatever the character you are going to uh, type using a keyboard that can be a character uh, sorry measure so you can type a single character or a multiple characters using a keyboard you know that where trigger is the enter key you know that right Whenever you press the keys in the keyboard, that particular ASCII value of that particular key will be displayed on the uh, screen. So, right, enter key. Enter key is like a trigger. When you press enter key, computer can understand that. So, some he is pressing something, right? Not only enter key, when you press a, any key in a keyboard, trigger right trigger is nothing but it's going to send a signal to the computer next example two the measure of the mouse is the position of the cursor i already told you guys the position of the cursor is measured in 2d that is x direction and y direction right where the trigger in the mouse is click that is button when the button is pressed so right mouse is going to work when the keyboard is uh, sorry key is pressed your keyboard is going to give the input so right these are nothing but triggers when you press the key trigger will happen signal will be sent when you press the mouse button trigger will occur uh, right signal will be sent getting my point now based on the application program measure and trigger we have three distinct modes. You now you know that what is a measure and what is a trigger. Based on that, I can classify three distinct modes. One is a request mode. So in this mode, measure of the device is not returned to the program until the device is triggered. So in this mode, measure of the device is not returned. That means uh, whatever the measure is there, right? The coordinate, if you consider a mouse or a keyboard, if you consider sorry keys if you consider a keyboard this measure of the device is not returned to the program until the device is triggered best example when you uh, if you want to pass a coordinate value to your program right it is not going to be passed to the program until you press the mouse button if you want to press a set of characters to your program your set of characters are not going to pass until you press the enter key this is request mode getting my point for example see consider a typical c program which reads a character input using scanf you know that scanf is used to read the input from the user when the program reads the input it halts 
when the right when it encounters a scan of statements and wait while the user type characters of the terminal don't get confused guys here whenever the uh, your whenever your program encounters a scan of statements it will wait for the input from the user until it types the character it will, typing means what trigger right so until you press the enter key uh, if you are uh, using until you uh, if you are using a keyboard or until you press the mouse button if you are using a mouse your input is not going to be accepted getting my point don't get confused please right next the data is placed in a keyboard buffer whatever the characters you are typing when you when you are using a scan if that characters all right are returned to the program only after the enter key is pressed getting my point guys right you are get giving the input using a scan f but when you are uh, typing the characters this characters are not going to be directly passed to the program no 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 whenever you press the enter key only it is going to be passed to the program until then it will be stored in a buffer that is a buffer is temporary memory keyboard will have some temporary memory printer will have also have some temporary memory so keyboard buffer is going to store that keys until you press the enter key another example for example consider a mouse logical devices such as locator we can move out pointing device to the desired location you can move the mouse to the desired location you do that and then trigger the device with its button getting my point the trigger will cause the location to be returned to the application program for example see you can move you can move your cursor to any position you want but this this see now i clicked and stopped here now when you click the mouse button this particular position of the coordinate values will be passed to the program until until i am uh, until then i am clicking until i am clicking the mouse button the input is not going to be passed until i click okay this is the example so trigger process measure process program see here program is going to request right whenever the trigger process when you, for example when you press the enter key then only the measure will be passed to the program until then it's not going to be passed to the program this is request mode next sample mode so in this mode input is immediate you don't want to wait for trigger to happen right in this mode input is immediate as soon as the function call in the user program is executed the measure is returned that means no trigger is needed here you don't want to wait for your input just you can uh, right send your input to the program without uh, waiting for any trigger so both request and sample modes are useful for the situation if one only if there is a single input device so if the sample mode works well or uh, this uh, request mode works well only for one input device that is single input device if you are using a multiple input devices these two modes can't be helpful okay however in the case of flight simulators or computer games variety of input devices are used right that's why i told you multiple um, inputs you can take multiple inputs in games right at that time the sample mode and the request mode is not at all useful for example see measure process when a computer program requires the uh, input directly it will ask next at a sec uh, on that on that moment only you are going to send the particular input to the program you are not going to wait in a request mode you should wait until the trigger is happened here you should not wait for any trigger like enter key or clicking the mouse like that directly with without wasting any time it will be passed now event mode i told you request mode and sample mode are not useful for simultaneous inputs so that's why we use event mode this mode can handle multiple interactions right for example 
Suppose that we are in an environment with multiple input devices, each with its own trigger and each running a major process. For example, if you are using two to three keyboards or if you are using through three to four mouses, that that time you need this type of mode that is event mode. For example, whenever a device is triggered, for example, whenever you press the key or whenever you press the mouse button, a event is generated. The device measure including the identifier file of the device is placed in an event queue. Don't get confused. I already told you three or four keyboards will be there. Input from each keyboard can be sent or three to four mouses. Position from each different mouses can be sent, right? So that's why I need to assign each device a identifier. Identifier is nothing but address. For example, keyboard one is an address for one first keyboard. Keyboard two is an address for second keyboard. Keyboard three is an address for third keyboard. Keyboard four is an address for fourth keyboard. Like that. For each keyboard, I can assign a identifier, and also I can store the each and every input from different different keyboards in a queue called event queue. You can see. Whenever a device is triggered, an event is generated. You know that the device measure, including the identifier for the device, is placed in a which queue? Event queue. For example, if the queue is empty, then the application program will will wait until an event occurs. For example, whenever you click the mouse, whenever you click the keyboard on, then only the particular uh, the contents and the identifier will be placed on the event queue. Otherwise. Your event queue will be empty. That's why the, your program should wait until some entry is there in your event queue. For example, if there is an event in a queue, the program can look at the first event type and then decide what to do. It will check. For example, assume that there are four events. First, it will check the first event and will decide what to do with that event. For example, if it is a mouse event, it should identify the position. For if for example, if the keyboard event of from a first keyboard, it should identify what are the letters that are pressed from that particular keyboard like that. So it should take the event one by one and it should decide what to do. Another approach also you can use instead of queue, you can use a function when an event occurs, which is called as callback. That means instead of uh, Uh, using a queue, you can use a function such as callback. Whenever the event occurs, a callback function is going to execute callback. A name only suggests it's going to it's going it's it will go back and it and it will execute something. That is another approach. See, this is the event mode. So major process will be there whenever you press keyboard or whenever you press mouse, the trigger is going to happen. and that measure whatever the contents from the keyboard or whatever the content from the mouse along with that the particular trigger related things will be stored in the event queue right program is going to check the event queue and it is going to take the event and it's going to execute the event based on the characteristics if there is see if there is no event in the event queue program should wait until some event is going to be there in a event queue getting my point guys very simple right suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section thank you thank you for watching the video